Hello everyone, welcome back to Game of Night. Today is episode 10 of our YouTube platform series and today we're going to be working on the moving platform and the invisible platform. Now before we begin, I want to put a small disclaimer that the moving platform doesn't work perfectly in a sense where if you move into the direction the platform moves in, your player will move slightly faster and if you move in the opposite direction of what the platform is moving in, your player will move slightly slower. So it's, it's a little weird, might throw you off a little bit, but um, I'm trying to figure out a better way to do it that's what I've spent. I've spent like a day or two just trying to figure out a better way to do it. Uh, but I just can't manage to figure something out that works better. And there's also just no videos or real forums or anything on how to do it better other than using external plugins. So yeah, let's get into the tutorial. I'm going to make the invisible platform first. So new scene, 2D scene. And we're going to call this invisible platform like so. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to change the type to a static body 2D. So it's just we have collisions. We'll give it a sprite 2D, and I made this very um, terrible <laughs> 16 by 16 little sprite, just so it's a very small one to jump on, because I think invisible platforms should be small. They shouldn't be big things that you hit easily. And we will give it a collision shape, and we'll make it a rectangle. So we'll just line that up like so. Cool, beautiful. We'll save it into scenes, interactable, and invisible platform like so. And we'll give it a area 2D, and this will be detection for the player. So we'll turn off monitor a ball, just so things can't see that this platform is there. And we'll give it a collision shape, and we'll give it a rectangle as well. And we'll just make it slightly bigger than the normal shape, so the player can easily hit the rectangle and reveal the platform. Cool. Now we're going to go into our sprite 2D, we're going to go into visibility, and we're going to click on modulate, and we're going to turn the transparency all the way down to zero because we want a invisible platform. We're gonna give it a animation player. So we'll go animation player, like so. Give it an animation called fade in, like so. Beautiful, good stuff. We'll make it 0.3 seconds long, nice and fast. And we'll give it a track, a property track, sprite 2D, and we'll type in modulate. So that's the colors, like so. We'll right click at the start, so you can see it's invisible, what we have right now. And at the end, we'll click again, insert key, and we will click value, and we'll turn up the transparency to full. Nice. Now if you hit play on this animation, you can see it fades in beautifully. Cool. That's that done. We're going to an invisible platform, give it a script, click on folder, we'll go up into our scripts folder, interactable and invisible platform. Beautiful. Create. And in here we'll need a var showing equals false. And we will click on our area 2D, click on node, and we will connect the signal. Cool. So and we'll go into our spike script and we'll just copy this a little bit right over here. Cool. And it's going to our invisible platform again. And we will replace this a little bit over here. And we will take this and say showing equals true. And in here we'll say and exclamation mark showing. So that means you're not showing. This just means showing is false. So it'll only be able to do this if it hasn't been showing already. And then we'll say animation player dot play fade in cool that's that done you just made an invisible platform so let's go into level one cool let's take this invisible platform uh let's scroll down and here it is and just to test it out right now i don't really have a good setup to use it on uh i'll put one down here in the middle and i'll put one just over here just because why not so let's jump in i'll jump down uh, oh i fell past it but it revealed itself nice let me go up in this secret little area I made, and let me jump down, and it works. Cool. So those are invisible platforms done. Nice. Now, let's make this moving platform. The one I said is not the best, but you know, we'll just make do. So we'll call this moving platform. We'll give this a animated animatable body 2D. Now this is what I was talking about. This got introduced in Godot 4. Uh, so there's not really many videos on it or anything about this animatable body 2D, so I can't really figure out the best way to use it. Uh, so I'm still trying to figure it out, and I will come back to it in the future if there is a better way to make the animations work well and uh, movement and stuff. But yeah, for now, it will work and get the job done. So we'll need to give this a collision shape, like so. Uh, we'll give the give it a sprite 2D as well. Sorry, we meant to do that the first time. And in the episode one folder we have a platform over here that i'll be using cool and i'll put it above the collision shape and we'll click on collision shape and we'll give it a rectangle like so nice oh a little bit too small there we go beautiful cool 
And now let's give this a animation player like so. And we'll give it one more thing just to add some logic. We'll give it a area 2D. So we'll make it so the platform only turns on once the player touches it once, just like the invisible platform. So we're literally going to copy that exact, exact same process. We'll turn off monitor, uh, monitorable, add child node, collision shape. We'll give it a rectangle. Of course, you don't have to do this. If you always just want your platform to move by default, go ahead. That's completely fine. There we go. Nice. Good stuff. And we'll save this into moving platform, go into your animation player, and this is where you basically designate how your platform moves. So I know that's a little annoying. You basically need to make either multiple animations and make a way to select those animations, or you just need to make multiple platforms and they all just have different things they do. So I'm sorry about that. Again, I'm trying to figure out better ways to do all these things, but right now it's just a little early into the release of the animatable body 2D to really understand it easily. But there are a lot of plugins. I suggest looking up on YouTube for a plugin video to see how the plugins work, because there are plugins that make it pretty easy, but I don't want to introduce plugins to the series because that's external stuff and I don't want it to rely on that. So I'm just going to give this an animation called move. I'm going to make it 0 0.6 seconds long, so it's not too short. I'll add track, property track, and animatable body 2D, and I'll go to position, like so. I will right click at the start, so we're at position 0. That's our starting point. And we want the middle point to be, let's say, let's say 128 pixels on the x axis, so a pretty long distance just for testing sake and then back to zero at the end. So this will move a long way. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> that wasn't good. <laughs> uh, let's make it, let's make it 1.6 minutes long. I'll move this endpoint over here and move this one kind of in the middle. There we go, that looks good, nice. And we'll put looping on so once you trigger it once, it will just keep going infinitely. And nice, that's that done. We'll give it a script. Folder up into here, scripts, interactable, and in here we have moving platform, our beloved. Nice. And in here we will have a var moving equals false. And we'll click on area 2D and we will connect this bad boy up like so. And we will again click on our, we could just do our invisible platform. We will just copy this exact part over here, go into our moving platform, paste it like so, and replace showing with moving. So if it's not moving, then we can do it. Then we will say moving equals true, because it's moving now. And we will drag in our animation player like so to reference it, and dot play, move. Nice. That's that done. So you have just made an invisible platform and a moving one. Again, I know the moving one, it's a little annoying to figure it out. Uh, it can be pretty frustrating, but yeah, that's just how it is for now. I will try my best to figure out a better way for in future, but for now, let's test this out. Uh, I'll put the moving platform up here. I haven't really, I don't really have the best level over here and I'll get into why in a second. Uh, let me take this jump pad and I'll move him to the bottom like so. I'm actually gonna move him over here. And we do actually need one over here as well. There we go. And let's test it out. So I'm going to hit play. Full screen. Go in. I'll just go up to this extra part I made. Pick up the health. Kill this dude. Whoa. And jump up. Cool. And nice. It works. Now, as you can see, it's a little jittery. Of course, I made this animation a little bit fast, so it moves really fast. But as you can see, when I move in the opposite direction that it's moving in, it goes pretty slow. So I did notice that, and I know it's annoying, but again, I'm trying to figure it out. But for now, it does work. It gets the job done. So yeah, that's that done. And now I can talk about what's going on. So why is the level completely different? Why does, does some of the fonts and stuff look different? Why is my mic quality different? Uh, I'm on a new laptop, so everything's different. Please let me know in the comments if the audio or something is terrible. Um, I haven't done too much testing with how the recording has been going. I've just had faith in my settings, hoping that they work properly. Uh, but yeah, so this is the new little level I made from scratch. I made the entire game back up from scratch because my last project had a few uh, bugs because of internal issues. Uh, my PC kind of corrupted a few things with Godot. And that was a while ago, but I've just been sticking through it. But 
I tried to record this video maybe three or four times yesterday and it just kept breaking completely. Uh, so yeah, not the um, <laughs> not the best. So I've basically made the entire project over. It took me about four hours following my tutorials just because um, I had a few issues with my Godot and other things. That's not to do with the tutorials. It's just my uh, projects having a few little issues. But yeah, so I'm basically back, set up on a new laptop. Um, I've been very focused on my own projects, so hasn't really been the most productive when it comes to the YouTube stuff. But again, I did try yesterday and I've actually been trying this, figuring out this moving platform thing for a while now, uh, but I just couldn't manage to. So sorry about that. Again, I know it's not perfect, but it does get the job done when necessary. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, you guys are the best. Um, I'm currently doing a animal poll in the Discord for my RPG. Uh, Nomania. Uh, for those that aren't aware, I'm converting it fully to 3D using voxel art. So, you know, it, it looks kind of decent so far. It's not too bad. Kind of happy of it. Um, so yeah, if there are any animals you'd like to add to the bucket list that I'll do a poll on in a little while, so people will do a poll to vote on which animals gets added to the game, uh, then you can either just drop it in the comment section below. So if there's a cool animal you want to add to the game, just drop it in the comments. And you can also just do it in Discord. So either way, whatever works for you. And as always, thank you for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.